Cool. Hello. Here comes again uh, another part of my video and audio notes uh, for today. And today is August 22nd, uh, 2020. I am working a little bit on 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 many time uh, on on many things in the same time. Finally, I have managed to phrase it out. Uh, so uh, this time or let's say this morning when I have been doing the same thing, so when I was essentially doing video and audio recording of my own thoughts, or in simpler words, when I was talking to myself as an imaginary friend, I have come to the conclusion that for the coming academic year, for all the courses or the curriculums connected to economics and to management, I will be using one overarching concept and it will be the concept of business model. And I will pair it with a bit of theory uh, under the general heading of collective intelligence and behavioral observation. So. Uh, this time, in this part of my video notes, I am preparing for a curriculum which is technically management or basics of management, but is more specifically oriented on uh, or targeted on students in one specific major, in the major of film and TV production. So those kids at our university, they are supposed to study for three years in order to learn how to make their career in the in the show business. I wonder to what extent they can learn it at the university, but I am doing my best to show them how that audiovisual business works. And to the extent that I can do it in class, I use the annual reports of the actually active and existing uh, companies to show how those businesses work. Uh, so I will start this time I pass to a view with a window of Google Chrome of an internet browser and I am going to show how I document myself when I want to uh, investigate a specific business. It is a piece of learning that I usually present to my students, now I am presenting it in the online form. So just let me go back. So this time I am interested in one specific company, Discovery Communications. Discovery Communications owns a bunch of TV channels. Of course, all the Discovery channels belong to Discovery Communications. But for example, Eurosport belongs to Discovery Communications as well and a private uh, TV station in Poland, TVN, also belongs to the holding Discovery Communications. So what I do is uh, I type in the Google Chrome browser the following phrase Discovery Communications plus Investor Relations. Uh, in other words, whatever company you want to investigate, you find their so-called investor relations site. It is a special site which uh, shows that company sort of from the kitchen door side. It shows uh, how they work as a business. Okay, so I have Discovery Communications Investor Relations. My first hit on the first hit on the list is Discovery Communications Overview. Uh, if I magnify it a little bit, you can see that the address here is ir.corporate.discovery.com. This is how those investor relations sites are frequently differentiated from like the basic sites of the same companies. They have that IR a component in their address. Anyway, anyway, I click. 
Here is that site of investor relations. Uh, here we have an overview of the company. What I want is their annual report uh, for the last fiscal year. So for, two th uh, for uh, 2019, maybe the half annual report for the first half of 2020. It can be interesting. So I, I go to SEC filings. Uh, for any company incorporated in the United States and listed in the US stock market, there is an obligation to report their finances and to report their general like business situation in standardized forms for uh, in, in the so-called uh, in the form of, of the so-called SEC filings. SEC is an acronym which stands for Securities and Exchange Commission. So, so first of all, I look for annual reports. Yes, and here it comes, 27th of February 2020. They published an annual report for 2019. Here it comes. Okay, I download it now. Discovery come 10K 2019. Great. I have it downloaded. Now I would like to see the half annual. If I want to find the half annual report. Probably I should go to quarterly filings. Okay. And what do we have here? Not half annual report filing year 2020. There is just a quarterly filing. Maybe there is something else. Statement of changes in beneficial ownership of securities. Okay, whatever. I will work with their annual report. Uh, so now I will get rid of that Chrome component in the window of the video and I will. Okay, I need to open, first of all, give me just one second. I will open uh, that report that I have just downloaded. So, discovery. And I will open another one because I want or I like to work comparatively that for Netflix. So I will start with the discovery communications and then I will do a comparison with Netflix. Okay, so I add them into the window of the video. Give me just a moment. Okay, Netflix. Cool. Okay, I said I want to start with Discovery, but sort of intuitively I started with Netflix. Uh, a word of explanation. When I deliver regular classes in those fundamentals of management, 
for the students of major film and TV production. The first case I start with is Netflix, because Netflix is sort of the most known to most young people. They all use it, or virtually all of them use it, or at least they know a friend who uses, who, uh, who uses Netflix. So it is like starting a course in general management with Coca-Cola, something that everybody knows. Anyway, here you have the front page of the annual report pursuant to Section 13 or 15D of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, Form 10K, for the fiscal year ended December the 31st, 2019. Okay. And we go with Netflix business. Netflix Incorporated is the world's leading subscription streaming entertainment service with over 167 million paid streaming memberships in over 190 countries enjoying TV series, documentaries and feature films across a wide variety of genres and languages. Members can watch as much as they want, anytime, anywhere, on any internet-connected screen. Members can play, pause and resume watching, all without commercials. Additionally, over 2 million members in the United States subscribe to our legacy DVD by mail service. Now, one general remark when you read those annual reports for your own information and this remark is also pertinent to the way i read those reports in my videos in my teaching those reports are technically supposed to give to investors an objective impartial information about the, like the financial stance and the business health of the given company netflix in this case still if there is a report of like 78 pages which you can see here in the page account in the very in the very top of uh, uh, of that preview window you of course use it as uh, uh, as a tool for public relations for presenting the company under a favorable light uh, once you can find in the report those statements or entire passages which are obviously praising the company, which are obviously a piece of marketing content. And this is why when you read those reports and when I read them, it is useful and as a matter of fact, it is necessary to sort of read between the lines to find the main points and to pass by all the like the, the bullshitty marketing content. Yet, sometimes in those, let's say, those praise fragments, you can find interesting pieces of information. For example, here, in this specific passage, which I reread or I reread the beginning, Netflix Incorporated is the world's leading subscription streaming entertainment service with over 167 million paid streaming memberships. This sentence, whilst being typically marketing content, delivers sort of in the, in the background an important information. It tells us indirectly that in this specific business, in the streaming business, size matters because they boast with having those 167 million paid streaming memberships. So that number obviously matters and they claim being the leading service in the streaming business or in the business of streaming entertainment. It is an, a, like another lead or another indication that in that business you want to be in the lead. Hmm? 
you want to lead in order to be a valuable business for investors. Okay, we are a pioneer in the delivery of streaming entertainment, launching our streaming service in 2007. Since this launch, we have developed an ecosystem for internet connected screens and have added increasing amounts of content that enable consumers to enjoy entertainment directly on their internet connected screens. As a result of these efforts, we have experienced growing consumer acceptance of and interest in the delivery of streaming entertainment. Our core strategy is to grow our streaming membership business globally within the parameters of our operating margin target. We are continuously improving our members' experience by expanding our streaming content with a focus on a programming mix of content that delights our members and attracts new members. In addition, we are continuously enhancing our user interface and extending our streaming service to more internet connected screens. Our members can download a selection of titles for offline viewing. Now I will use a technique that I frequently use when I want to actively understand a piece of text. Would it be a book, a report like this one? Sometimes I apply to textbooks, whatever, to legal acts. So, uh, and the technique consists in starting from the end. So, first of all, I would like to attract your attention to that last paragraph in that section about us. Our core strategy is to grow our streaming membership business globally within the parameters of our operating margin target. We're continuously improving our members' experience by expanding and so on and, and, and so on. If you now, if you imagine that you take that paragraph as you would take a piece of like soaking wet cloth, like a soaking wet shirt, and you squeeze it in order to squeeze the water out. So you want to squeeze out all the bullshit and stay with valuable information. And valuable information in that paragraph is that this business grows on customer's pleasure, on the very literally understood satisfaction, emotional satisfaction. Because if you read carefully that paragraph, it is all about giving the very literal, down-to-earth, physiological, dopamine-based pleasure to the viewer. We are continuously improving our members' experience. Improving someone's experience is giving them more satisfaction, right? Mm? With a focus on a programming mix of content that delights our members and attracts new members. Improving experience, giving delight and attract new members. By the way, if you have ever tried Netflix, you know that they essentially attract uh, new members with that free trial. Usually, I think it is one month. So during that one month, when essentially you don't pay and they deliver you content for free, they have to give you enough pleasure to make you slightly addicted to that pleasure. Uh, so it is a business where on the long run, the operating margin, so the margin of operating profit in the business, or the amount of money you make at the end of the year, or at the end of each day, basically, that amount of money depends directly on the amount of pleasure that you can give to viewers. That's how this business works. Or at least that's how they understand it. So, business segments. Effective in the fourth quarter of 2019, we operate our business as one global operating segment. It is something new because in, in the past years they had different operating segments, but we will see it. Eh? Our revenues are primarily derived from monthly membership fees for services related to streaming content to our members. 
See note 10 segment and geographic information in the accompanying notes to our consolidated financial statements for further detail. I hope you will get there, probably not in this video, but in some of the subsequent ones. Okay, now, this was a glance uh, of, at Netflix. And now we will really do the same with Discovery. So I respectfully kick Netflix out of our video window and I add Discovery. And this time I will open the annual report of Discovery. Here it is. I just put myself over the top of the report window and here we go so once again it is an annual report form 10k you know the story and we go to the table of contents okay business let's see what they say about their business for convenience, the terms discovery, the company, we, us or our are used in this annual report on Form 10K to refer to both Discovery Incorporated and collectively to Discovery Incorporated and one or more of its consolidated subsidiaries unless the context otherwise requires. On March 6th, 2018, the company acquired Scripps Networks Interactive and changed its name from Discovery Communications Incorporated to Discovery Incorporated. Overview. We are a global media company that provides content across multiple distribution platforms, including linear platforms such as pay television, pay TV, free to air, and broadcast television, authenticated Go applications, digital distribution arrangements, content licensing arrangements and direct-to-consumer subscription products. As one of the world's largest pay TV programmers, we provide original and purchased content and leave events to approximately 3.8 billion cumulative subscribers and viewers worldwide through networks that we wholly or partially own. We distribute customized content in the United States and over 220 other countries and territories in 50 languages. Our global portfolio of networks includes prominent non-fiction television brands such as Discovery Channel, our most widely distributed global brand, HDTV, Food Network, TLC, Animal Planet, Investigation Discovery, Travel Channel, Science Channel and Motor Trend, previously known as Velocity, domestically and currently known as Turbo in most international countries. Among other networks in the United States, Discovery also features two Spanish language services, Discovery en Español and Discovery Familia. Our international portfolio also includes Eurosport, the leading sports entertain entertainment provider and broadcaster of the Olympic Games across Europe, TVN, a Polish media company, why did I tell you, as well as Discovery Kids, a leading children's entertainment brand in Latin America. We participate in joint ventures, including the recently formed multi-platform venture with Chip and Joanna Gaines, which plans to launch linear networks, SVOD and TV Everywhere pro products in 2020. And Group 9 Media, Group 9, a digital media holding company, home to top digital brands, including now this news, the Dodo, Three List, Pop Sugar and Seeker. We operate production studios and prior to the sale of our educational business in April 2018, we sold the curriculum-based education products and services. Now, if you compare this, this overview of business with what I have just presented about Netflix, the first, I think the most striking difference is the, multi is the multitude, the sheer number of different names and brands that you can see in the description of the business in the case of Discovery Communications. With Netflix, it is just Netflix. And from Netflix, you go to particular pieces of 
content, so to titles, if you want. With Discovery, it is a whole bunch, like a whole galaxy of different uh, brands in the media business, of different platforms. So in the case of Netflix, it looks like a one unified business. In the case of Discovery Communications or Discovery Incorporated, it is like a, a little bit like a handful of gems or a handful of stones or a handful of whatever small objects you can imagine. Each of them is slightly different. They share the same characteristics. So here you can see two very different philosophies uh, of making money on the film and TV production. In the case of Netflix, it is streaming. In the case of uh, Discovery, it is mostly broadcasting, although, although, as I understand, they have some streaming services. So you have two completely different businesses or apparently very different in their basic philosophies. Now I will go to another part of the report. Uh, first of all, in the report of Discovery and then in the report of Netflix to just to show you how I sort of connect the dots in uh, when I study annual reports of companies. So. I go to the contents page and I go to the item which is called the selected financial data, item 6. Boom. Okay, here we are. Revenues, operating income, net income, net income loss, cash and cash equivalents, balance sheet, total assets and so on. My teaching of management and my teaching of economics always covers, always, uh, those basic financial categories or the understanding of those basic financial categories. I am deeply convinced that you cannot understand management or cannot understand microeconomics without understanding the basic financial concepts uh, that accompany financial reports published by companies. You just need to understand how money travels and how money is being made in those businesses uh, in order to understand anything more uh, elaborate or an anything, let's say, more structured. So, revenues. Revenues, to put it simply, are the value of sales. It is the sum total of all the bills that the customers paid to the company in question. Uh, now you have essentially, uh, well, there are, there are two remarks as for how to read those financial statements, especially of American companies. This number dollar 11 comma 144 it means that uh, the revenue of discovery incorporated the consolidated revenue was of 11 billion 144 millions of dollars in 2019 So the comma serves not as a decimal separator, but it separates orders of magnitude with a step of 1000. So it separates thousands from millions, millions from billions and so on. Commonly in this case, or in the case of such big businesses, uh, data is presented in millions of dollars as like the default unit of measurement. Maybe it is written somewhere. Uh, the selected balance sheet information. Okay. Okay, it is in millions of, of, of dollars. So whatever uh, you think about it, you can see that those revenues have been growing. Okay. 
from six can from six billions uh, three hundred ninety four millions of dollars in two thousand fifteen to more than eleven billions of dollars in two thousand nineteen. We have a growing business. Okay, now I pass to the same type of statement to the same type of selected financial data table in the case of Netflix. So once again, I kick the discovery report out of the video window and I switch to the Netflix report. Let's go to Netflix. Okay, cool. I go to their table of contents and item six selected financial data. By the way, this is one of the reasons uh, why I prefer to use and to read annual reports of companies in the form of those SEC filings in the standardized form. It simply has like a constant structure. I know where to find the type of information I am looking for. So selected financial data. Let's have a look. Well, in the case of Netflix, uh, you have a different unit of measurement. It is written here. Numbers in thousands except per share data. And what we can see here is that Netflix in 2019 had 444,156 millions, 20 billions. So the revenues in 2019 were 20 billions, 156 million, 447 thousands of dollars. If you remember what I have just shown you about the discovery, at discovery they are a little bit above 11 billion. Uh, in the case of Netflix, it is a little bit above 20 billion. There is a difference. But what is interesting, we go back to 2015. I will magnify those revenues in 2015. As you probably remember, discovery in 2015 was at six billion three hundred and ninety four millions of dollars of revenue. Netflix was at six billion seven hundred and seventy nine millions. So very close. Huh? But since then, Netflix has been growing much faster. Uh, because it has grown up to the end or as for the end of 2019, it has grown to 20 billions of dollars against the 11 billions in the case of discovery. You see, this is an illustration of the importance of innovation and technological change in uh, any business model you want. Netflix is simply more innovative in technological terms than Discovery Incorporated. Discovery is essentially a traditional broadcaster uh, which works by including new types of content into a very traditional broadcasting business model. Br broadcasting, producing and programming. In the case of Netflix, it is much more innovative, a business model, uh, very oriented on the development of the internet, on the development of streaming, Mind you, in 2015, betting on streaming was really a bet. It was risky. It was not necessarily a, like a done thing. It could have sort of turned wrong. Yet it worked. So it is that component of risk, of developmental risk, which is very visible if you compare Discovery Communications with Netflix. Okay, now we might have an idea of how profitable those businesses are. So what I have a look at now is the net income. 
Net income is essentially the money that you stay with after you have paid interest on your loans and after you have paid your income taxes in a business. And in 2019, Netflix generated a net income of almost two billions of dollars, one billion eight hundred and sixty-six million nine hundred and sixteen thousands of dollars. Let's see how it plays out. So, if you compare it to the to, to the revenue. The net income is roughly like 7% of the revenue. It is quite good, quite nice. Uh, quite nice. Uh, now I will switch to the report of discovery to show you the same type of variable. So I add the window of discovery. Cool. Okay. Let me just jump over the top. And here we go. So, revenues, you, re you remember, in 2019, 11.1 billions of dollars. And the net income of 2.2 2 billions of dollars. So it is, I would say, around 10%. Um, and uh, roughly speaking, it means that Discovery, whilst being smaller than Netflix in terms of size, seems to be slightly more profitable in uh, terms of net income. It makes more money per each dollar billed to the final customers. Okay, so that would be all for the moment in that video. So I hope you, you will want to listen and watch more after having watched this video.